Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about what's going on in the economy in France. Now, France is the seventh largest economy in the world, the third largest economy in Europe, and the second largest economy in the European Union, because the United Kingdom is no longer in the European Union as a result of Brexit. And as you know, I don't want to talk about Brexit. But what I do want to talk about is the fact that the French Prime Minister, a guy called Michel Barnier, has resigned. And you might be sitting there thinking, Michel Barnier, I thought the leader of France was called Emmanuel Macron. And you'd be absolutely right if you were thinking that, because France has what's known as a semi-presidential system. It has a president and the prime minister, which I think is quite unusual, because if you compare that to most countries around the world, the USA has a president. We all know who's going to be the next president. And then we've got countries like Canada, the United Kingdom and Australia that have a prime minister. It's rare that you have both of these. However, as you can see from this list, there are actually 30 countries around the world that have this semi-presidential system. They have a president and a prime minister. And probably the two most notable on this list are Russia and Ukraine. And under the French semi-presidential system, the president, Emmanuel Macron, deals with all international affairs and defence systems, and the prime minister deals with everything else, including the national budget. And the national budget is the bone of contention in France at the moment because the new prime minister tried to pass his budget. But rather than putting it to a vote amongst the parliament, he decided to pass it through using special powers whereby it didn't need to be voted for. However, everybody else in parliament decided that this was a really bad idea. A motion of no confidence in the prime minister was tabled. That vote was held and everybody voted in favour of ousting him and he subsequently resigned. Now the problems in France relate to the election that was held in July of this year whereby no single party gained a majority. And as a result of the fact that three different party groups gained more than 140 seats each, a hung parliament was formed whereby alliances are needing to be formed with different parties in order to get things approved. Now, one of the reasons why Michel Barnier was struggling to get support for his budget was because it's an austerity budget. It includes lots of tax increases and lots of things that people aren't very keen on. And the reason why he put that budget forward is because the European Union is now putting pressure on France to reduce its debt and also to contribute more to the European Union itself. This chart shows the level of national debt in France between 2019 and the forecast level out to 2029. And what you can see from this table is that the amount of debt in France has increased in every single one of the past five years and is forecast to continue increasing for the next five years. In 2019, France's national debt was just under 2.6 trillion euros, which is around 2.9 trillion US dollars. The current level of the national debt is 3.5 trillion euros and it's expected to increase to more than 4.2 trillion by 2029. And this chart shows the ratio of national debt to GDP. And what this shows is that in 2023, the ratio was 110.6%. And the problem with that ratio of 110% is that the European Union recently set a new limit for all European Union members of a maximum of 60% national debt to GDP. So France is almost double that level that's been set. And unfortunately, from France's point of view, the forecast ratio is expected to increase to 112.4% in 2024 and 113.8% in 2025. And in addition to the debt to GDP ratio, the European Union has also set a maximum target for a country's deficit of 3% of GDP. However, France currently has a deficit of more than 6%. So France is breaching all of the European Union rules. And I think one of the things that's interesting is that in 2023, France was the second largest contributor to the budget for the European Union, 
contributing more than 23.8 billion euros. And obviously, if France hadn't made those contributions to the European Union, its debt level probably would have been lower. So all of the people in the UK who are always complaining about Brexit, I think there's swings and roundabouts. There are some benefits to not actually being in the European Union. You don't have to abide by the European Union rules and you don't have to keep making contributions. And just in case you're wondering what the situation is with Germany, the largest economy in the European Union, this chart shows the ratio of government debt to GDP for Germany. And as you can see, in 2023, Germany's debt to GDP ratio was 62.9%. So only 2.9% above that target level of 60% set by the European Union. So Germany is in pretty good shape in terms of what the EU is telling it to do. Now, aside from its debt levels, France does have some fundamental problems at the moment. This chart shows the quarterly recorded unemployment figures in France over the past three years. And one thing to note is that the scale on the right hand side of this chart does not start at zero. It actually starts at 7% and goes up to 7.55%. And what this chart shows is that unemployment in France over the past three years has been above 7%. And the most recent published figures for the third quarter of 2024 shows that the current level is 7.4%. And just to put that into context, this chart shows the current unemployment rates for the G20. And as you can see, South Africa is way out on its own here with an unemployment rate of more than 32%. Spain is ranked at number two with an employment of 11.2%, which is really high. India has an unemployment rate of 10.1%, Turkey 8.6%, Argentina 7.6%, and France has the seventh highest unemployment ratio out of the whole of the G20. And that level of 7.4% is significantly higher than the 4.3% in the UK and 4.1% in the USA and Australia. And one of the biggest problems that France has at the moment is productivity. And this chart shows the movement in producer prices in France over the past 12 months. And what this shows is that in 11 out of the last 12 months, producer prices have been falling and they've been falling at significant levels. And the most recent figures published for October 24 show that producer prices year on year are down by 5.7%. And as we've discussed before, producer prices, which are also referred to as factory gate prices, are basically the price of goods as they're leaving the factories in France. So year on year, prices are down by 5.7%, but costs in France are not down by 5.7%. So what we've got here are companies in France being squeezed. They're seeing their costs going up, but their sales prices are going down. And what that means is that their profit margins will be falling, and lots of companies in France are actually making losses at the moment. And it was recently reported that the level of bankruptcies has increased significantly in 2024 compared with 2023. So lots of companies in France right now are struggling. And this chart shows the movement in the official rate of inflation in France over the past 12 months. And as you can see, the French authorities have managed to achieve a reduction in inflation from the level of 3.7% in December 23 to the current level of 1.3%. However, the current level of 1.3% is actually below France's target rate of 2%. And the reason why France wants a target rate of 2% is that that level of price increase allows everybody to actually increase their sales prices. So it enables companies to be able to factor in an increase in its revenue from an uplift in prices, which then it can cope with increases in costs. But when you've got 1.3% inflation, it's very difficult to be able to pass on all of those cost increases. And what we're seeing in France at the moment is that factory gate prices are falling by almost 6%. So this is an absolute nightmare from the French producer's point of view. And until they can get their prices up, they're going to continue struggling. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think it's important to keep an eye on all of the major economies in the world. And France is the seventh largest economy. It's the second largest in the European Union. And it's actually the leader in terms of what's going on in the military side of the European Union, because Germany has a slightly reduced position as a result of Germany's history. So France is an important player in terms of what's going on in Europe. And what we've talked about in today's video is that currently France has political turmoil. It's a complete mess. 
When you have a Prime Minister who only took on the job in September of this year, resigning before the end of the year, that tells you that it's very difficult to get things done in France at the moment. And the reason for that is because they have this hung parliament. They've got three different political powers, all of whom have different agendas who are holding around 140 seats or more each. And so it becomes really difficult to get anything approved. And what Barnier found was that he had his budget, which was already going to be very unpopular because the European Union are telling France to reduce their debt and to tighten their belts. So basically, you're having to introduce things that nobody really wants, increased taxes and things that are going to increase the amount of revenue that the state is collecting. You put forward a budget like that at a time when there's a political divide, it's virtually impossible to get it through. So Barnier decided that he was just going to wave it through anyway because there are special powers in France that allow the Prime Minister to do that. However, everybody spotted what he was doing, not surprisingly, and so a motion of no confidence was put forward and he lost that vote and now he's resigned. And so Emmanuel Macron, who's the president, who only really deals in international affairs and defence issues, doesn't get involved in the day-to-day -day stuff, is now having to select a new Prime Minister. But the problem that he has is who's he going to select and is that Prime Minister actually going to get anything approved? Because by definition, whoever he selects, there's going to be two opposing parties who are unlikely to be supportive of whatever that new Prime Minister puts forward. So we've got a real logjam here and there's actually been some calls for a new presidential election for Emmanuel Macron himself to resign and step down. Now he's come out and said that he's definitely not going to do that. He's going to remain in power until 2027, but he's going to be sitting above this complete nightmare that they've got in France right now. And when you have a situation like this, it tends to cause major problems in the economy because nothing can get approved and therefore everything just carries on as it is at the moment. And as we saw from the data earlier, the problems that France have are quite deep rooted. They've got high levels of unemployment and they've got real problems in their industry at the moment in terms of their producer prices and being able to pass on rising costs. And until the situation is fixed, those problems are likely to get worse. And over and above all of that, you've got the European Union who are saying to France, your debt levels are way too high. They're almost double the targets that we've set and we don't like that. But we'll continue taking large contributions from the French economy to keep funding the European budget. So there are a lot of issues going on in France at the moment and it doesn't look like there's any solutions popping up at any point in the near future. So I think what's likely to happen over the course of the next three to six months is that we'll continue to see this political turmoil. The new prime minister will be appointed whether or not he lasts more than three or four months. Who knows? If he's able to get his budget through will be a bit of a miracle because it's unlikely that the parties are going to be able to agree a consensus. And I think the most likely outcome is that we'll continue to see this political turmoil, we'll continue to see things not being approved in France, and we'll continue to see the situation getting worse. So I'll keep you posted on any future developments as and when they happen. Hopefully you found today's video useful, informative, and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end, and here's something to put a smile on your face.